Joker is just honestly one of those villains that can just be a menace for no absolute reason. Right on top of Reverse Flash literally torturing Barry Allen as a kid right before Barry Allen even ever knew he existed. It also kind of makes you question the whole no-kill rule on Batman's part because Joker has literally terrorized all of Gotham just for the sake of finding out Batman's birthday. He's also paralyzed Batgirl to prove a point, and he's also killed Jason Todd to prove a point. He just loves proving them points. But it gets even better because he doesn't just torment Batman and the Bat family, he also torments random citizens of Gotham as well. Like cutting off a father's fingers because he forgot his son's birthday, or sleeping under an asylum worker's bed for days, moving things around the house to slowly make him go insane. All in the sake of proving a point. There's just levels to the madness. And while I think that these instances are possibly the craziest Joker has ever done, it's just the tip of the iceberg because this dude literally took the time to torture somebody for five years. As we start the story with Joker broadcasting to Gotham his next evil plan, while also Joker gassing a guy in a gorilla suit, making him laugh to death. Telling all of Gotham that his circus will find everyone in Gotham soon. Later on, we see a reporter named Tommy arguing with his fellow workers about Joker just being a man, and that the GCPD has turned him into some myth-like being. And Tommy, seeing that the entire room is scared to even report on the Joker, Tommy sets out to prove everyone wrong, and that Joker is just a sick and lonely man. So a few nights later, Tommy ends up following a lead on the Joker that brings him to a rundown joke store. And upon entering, he sees Joker sitting in the middle of the room, laughing ominously. Tommy then hides as he listens to the Joker's goons, question if Joker's plan will even work, because it seems insane. And Joker just follows this up by spraying acid in the goon's face, killing him for questioning the Joker's methods. However, while the Joker starts laughing, Tommy accidentally lets out a snort in fear, causing Joker and Harley Quinn to fight. Find him. And after Harley Quinn pulls Tommy out of hiding, in a desperate attempt to stay alive, he tries to pick apart the character of Joker, telling him that he's alone and doesn't have any friends. In Tommy doing this, it would buy him enough time for Batman and Robin to show up to stop the Joker, and Tommy would later go free. But his run-in with the Joker wouldn't end there, as a year later, Tommy comes back home to his roommate with an abhorrent smell lurking in the house. Questioning his best friend on why the room smells, he would enter his room only to find his body strung up like an insane-induced puppet with Joker's voice telling Tommy not to get too close. The wiring took him ages. With Joker going on to tell Tommy that he thought a lot about what he said before he went to the asylum, and that the Joker thinks what he said was true, that he didn't have any friends until now, because he just killed his competition, and now Joker is his best friend. Along with this, Joker also tells Tommy that he knows everything there is to know about him, as he starts to psychologically torture him until the point Tommy can do nothing but cry from fear. And Joker's response to his wailing is to give Tommy a frighteningly awkward hug, with him later jumping on the stoop of the window, telling him that he looks forward to his next visit. Hours later, Batman and the police would show up to Tommy's house to not only save him, but to tell him that he's safe from the Joker, because he's back behind bars. What little comfort that is. Because six months later, he breaks out again, and in that time, Tommy moved, ditched his family, and got a completely new life to escape the Joker. But Tommy would still be fearful. So fearful, in fact, that he needs to talk with someone while desperately closing everything in the house, locking everything in fear that the Joker will come back. However, in a second round to see if everything was locked, he finds one window still open. So he hides in the shadows and prays and prays that the Joker won't come for him, and after a while, it seems fine, until he walks out into his living room to see a big red I miss you written on his home floor. Another year later, Tommy has completely changed his identity and finds out from a register worker that Joker has broken out of Arkham again. Upon hearing this, he immediately hops in his car, speeding to his house, bursting into the front door, screaming his wife's name, hoping she's okay, only to find Joker holding his wife, dancing while playing their anniversary tape. Joker would then throw Tommy's wife aside and tell the both of them that he's not going to kill them or anything, but that he only wants to catch up because the Joker's line of work can be oh so lonely at times. Along with this, Joker would then turn on his own slideshow of his personal favorite victims, making the pair see each and every horrifying image, with the Joker also describing how he killed each of them and what they were like before dying, forever traumatizing the two of them. But it doesn't stop there because another year later, Tommy has separated himself from everything in his life now and lives alone in a cabin.
Robin. But no matter how hard Tommy tries to hide, the Joker still always finds him, dragging Tommy down into his cellar where he then tells Tommy that this will be his home base for the time being, where the Joker would then walk into the light showing that he's now cut off his face and has many other faces lying around as well. Tommy at this point would still be terrified until finding a gun lying around, picking it up and pointing it at the Joker, telling the Joker that he can't live his life like this anymore and he'll do what the Batman can't. But upon firing the gun, it turns out to be loaded with water and Joker ends up just using his knockout gas on Tommy. The police would later arrive to Tommy's house to question Tommy about what happened and upon further questioning, they don't believe Joker was even there and that Tommy was just making this up out of trauma, really making you just face palm at the justice system in Gotham. So after so many years of torture, in the present day, we see Tommy as a patient in Arkham Asylum due to all of the endless insanities that he's been through. And in the present day, Joker ends up loose in Gotham again, and one of Tommy's old friends comes by to check on Tommy. His friend would even ask Tommy to come with him so that he can be safe, but Tommy completely refuses. Because in his mind now, he believes he has only one true friend, and anyone else is fake and doesn't care about him, and that his true friend has helped him heal while in Arkham. So Tommy's old friend reluctantly accepts his decision, and Tommy goes back off to his room. And once Tommy gets back in his room, a voice reaches out saying, Hello, Tommy. With Tommy in such a broken state, saying back, Oh, thank God, Eric. I thought maybe he'd gotten you. Just promise me you won't leave. You won't get hurt. I've lost too much in the last five years. I can't lose another best friend. Promise me you'll be there, Eric. Please promise me. However, he can't promise him anything because he was never real as the Joker stands over a completely and utterly broken Tommy with a hand on his shoulder smiling because he finally proved his point, ending the story. I hope you guys like that story. It's extremely dark, I know, and this video is a little bit longer than usual, so if you guys made it to this point, I thank you so much, and please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.